Hello, and welcome to another episode of AP Taylor Swift. Today, we are deep diving. We're deep diving Shake It Off, specifically. If you did not have a chance to listen to our repetition episode last week, definitely go through and listen to that first super fun episode. We have decided to go deeper into one of the songs that came up last week, and that is Shake It Off. Before we dive in, I just want to make a quick plug. We had a lot of fun literary references in our last episode and undoubtedly will in this one as well. Go check out our bookstore where we link out all of the amazing literary references that we make, but also subscribe to our Substack if you're not already doing so, where we tend to do some extra credit and go a layer deeper. With that, I'm going to pass it over to Jen to get us set up for today's episode. Well, I said this in last week's episode, and I think it's going to continue here. We're going to be doing what we do, but I think we're going to maybe knock it up a little bit of a notch and to do something a little bit different. So Um, For our deep dives, we always do who is the speaker, who are they speaking to, and what's the purpose of this. And we usually stay really within the song, which is kind of the easiest way to start of like, let's just look at the text. Let's really focus on the words here. And I think you can step back and you can do other things. And I think we're going to do that here where it's still who is the speaker, step back, (laughs) who is the speaker, and what we Taylor is the writer of this song, or what is she trying to accomplish outside of the text? What was like the song itself trying to accomplish? And rhetorical analysis is fun because you can do both. We could go into this and just focus on the eyes and the hues and the he's and what it's saying, but we can also think what was the impact that this text had on a larger scale, which is I think where we're really going to be spending our time today. So we're we graduated, you guys. We're really we're really we're up in our on. skills in these episodes. Yeah, I think I'm starting to develop maybe a reputation for picking songs that do this because I did this in our fall deep dive of Red, where I spent more time talking about the song in her musical canon and what it meant as opposed to the song itself. I mean, I'm happy to talk about the song as well, Shake It Off. But again, Shake It Off came out in 19 on the album 19 in the year 20. It's not confusing at all. And then 19 Taylor's version came out in 22 track six written by Taylor Swift, Max Martin and Shellback. And this was her lead single for the album 19. And for those of you who are newer to Taylor Swift, I know we have a couple of you. Hi, welcome. What you need to know about 19 is it was her first pop album. So with Red, she started to make this transition. Red as an album had a mix of country and pop. She also worked with Max Martin and Shellback on Red. But for 19, she decided to fully immerse herself in the pop world and call this a pop album. So I think when you submit yourself for the Grammys and awards and whatnot, you have to say which genre you are in. And this one was squarely in pop. So this is a pretty big departure for her. This is her fifth album, right? I don't want to get that wrong. Yeah, yeah. You have debut, fearless, speak now, red, and yeah. 19. So this is her fifth album as an artist. And all of a sudden, she's fully changing genres from country to pop. Okay, so you have to she keep that. shook off that she country shook, twang. Exactly. There you go. So she shook off her country twang, her country background, sort of. The sound, at least. Cut off her sp- hair. She did. She chopped off her hair. She moved to New York City. She went full on. If you are watching us on YouTube or TikTok and Instagram, you can see I'm wearing my 19 sequin blazer. Like she fully changed her image as well as her sound. So think about it. The year is 20. We know that Taylor Swift is coming out with a new album and all of a sudden she needs to reintroduce herself to her old fans and introduce herself anew to new fans as a pop star. How do you do that? How do you change your genre and change who you are as as an artist? The biggest pop song of the century. You do, but what makes it the biggest pop song of the century, Monsi, I wonder? Why is Shake It Off so effective? Epizuxis! No. (laughs) <laughs> what is Epizuxis, you ask? Go watch, listen to our last episode. Uh, but actually, I would say I do think the repetition of Shake It Off, the phrase and the, the, the other forms of poetic repetition that she uses throughout the song do create a very catchy song. And this song needed to do a lot of things. And it certainly needed to be catchy, right? If you think about the first song to introduce her to people who didn't know her, or they only thought of her as a country music artist, it needed to be catchy. Um, The song also needed 
to make a statement about who she is as a person and how other people perceive her. If I take a pause for a second, I started dissecting this song when we, this was the first song I printed out lyrics to and started dissecting when we decided as a group to make this podcast. And I actually wrote the date on here. It's June 20th, 2020. So that must have been like the first time the three of us got together. We're like, I think we can do this. Like, how would we do this? And what do we do? And so I printed out this song and just started and I'm going to show here and I'll put it on. That's so it's an, like, that is an artifact now. It that's is an beautiful. artifact now. Yeah. And I think that's why I dated it because I like wanted to, like we didn't yet know how we were going to approach talking about these songs. We just knew that we were going to dive into the lyrics and do an analysis. So I started doing that then. And I don't even remember why I was saying that. Oh, one of the things I wrote was, you know, this song is pretty simply, simple lyrically. There's no real metaphors, but it's about not letting other people's perceptions of you get you down, that you are more than what people say, see, or think about you. And that's so important when we think about this transition point from country to pop because people only saw her as a country star. That was a lot of the criticism that she got from Red was this, this album's all over the place. Like there's two, like you're a country star. Why are you trying to veer into pop? Um, And so this song- And she is, was like, watch me. Yeah, I take, I see you and raise you. Exactly. So it's all about shedding perceptions of who people, of what people think you are, of just like not letting them, not letting it get to you and marching to the beat of your own drum and being your own person and going in the direction that you want to go in and really letting music do that. The first two verses are all negative. I stay out too late. I got nothing in my brain. Go to on, gone too many dates. Can't make them stay. This is all the negative bullshit that people say about her. But I, and then she gets into, but I keep cruising. I can't stop, won't stop moving. It's like, I got this music in my mind saying it's going to be all right. And it's the music that helps her shed what people think about her and move forward. And that is exactly what she's doing with this song and this album is embracing the music that she wants to embrace to take her career where she wants to. And that's I, my dissertation on 1980. I want to interject <laughs> to also just add that it's not even just her. I think today artists make it very clear that everything they do is for their fans. And in the, in the world of social media, artists now have direct lines of communication mm -hmm. with their fans fans in ways that they perhaps didn't in decades past but Taylor was really one of the first oh yeah to Tumblr. make it all MySpace. about her fans yeah and she was I think one of the first artists who I mean every artist thanks their fans at the things like people choice awards or VMAs or things where there's like a people voting element but I remember Taylor being fixated on like this is what my fans are saying I'm gonna listen and she did start pre- social media as we know it today but like in a Facebook era and I think she was always very about like who are the people that support me and cheer me on and what do they want and right. she's very fixated on that and in many ways that this song is about everyone else there's the media the traditional voices yes. who give you crit like the critics the, grief. Yeah. the professional so to speak and then there's the fans and there's this song is very yeah, much this is the players and the haters yeah and the heartbreakers and the fakers are the ones that she is like, those are the people giving her grief. And Five pain. albums in, she definitely had her fair share of haters. Red got a lot of media attention because she had her whole posse of friends. 22 was a big thing. Like there were a lot, there were a lot of news stories coming up about her dating life, et cetera, et cetera, by this point. And she was very, very adamant about the fact that her fans want her to switch to pop. Her fans are telling her she needs to switch well, genres. They're, they're supporting her. I don't know that it's like the fans were like, you need to make this change. Well, but like no, she started think, to make it in red. No, and but fans I think were supportive she, of that. Well, I think it was the fact that her most popular songs in red were some of the pop ones. And so she was getting these really clear signals by mm. the people who love her the most that they like, these are songs slap. Excited. Let's do more. Yeah. Like they're these excited about the pop songs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't just yeah, that I, they were supporting her. They were like, yeah, yeah more of this. And more yeah. all too well. 10 minute version talk about knowing your audience though i mean we we talk about this so much from a writing perspective but we're also marketers here and i think that's if you even look at like the most successful brands and taylor swift is a brand absolutely it's the ones she makes decisions for her fans and for herself to be fair right. like she's not going to make music she doesn't want to make because a fan asks her to do it like this song was she did go pop 
because fans were supportive of it. But I think the song was also for herself. And she talks about this a lot, that there are songs and albums that she wrote because she had to write. She releases Taylor's version because she needed to do it for herself. Right. But because she's created that relationship, it's very symbiotic. Of fans are very supportive of her and kind of back and forth. And it's when, you know, don't come after me, business people. But if you're making decisions only for shareholders, not for your customers, right. that's not going to be as problem. successful. You know, like, and it's 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 a lesson that I see people all the time. Like, why is Taylor so popular? And I'm like, she's a hell of a marketer. She's like, She's an amazing she's, marketer. She's an incredible marketer. She's incredibly talented. Don't get me wrong. But if you want to know the difference between her and others like successful pop stars marketing. or like less successful, it's marketing. She's so good at it. And it's because she is she hyper knows her focused and on, her, on customer. her customer. Yeah. And she knows her brand. And she, I wrote a medium post about this. We'll link it in the show notes or the whatever. Just like really dissecting like why Taylor Swift is like what I learned about marketing through Taylor Swift. And even in her rebrands, right? Each era she reinvents herself. She does it in a way that is still very authentic to who she is. So she is not, you know, she's starting over. Yes. But in a way that still encapsulates who she is and keeps her core values the same. And so it's not like you don't recognize her each time we go through and we do these songs and we can see exactly who she is and we can see the threads of who she was and who she how she's evolved she's not shedding everything she knows and is every time she shifts genres or or tries to tell a new story and i think she did that really really beautifully in 19 and in particular in shake it off again i know that this is a controversial opinion that this is my favorite song but i think she does she captures the emotions of not letting the bullshit get to you and puts that into a pop song and we talked in the previous episode about there's it's it's pretty simple lyrically the words themselves are it's a lot of monosyllable monosyllabic words um mm-hmm. but the emotion is there some of the things that i wrote it's like i got this music in my mind saying it's gonna be all right i said this is therapy taylor right this is taylor finding music as something that's gonna help her through what she's you know what's challenging her And the way that she did it was in a way that was fun, playful. She wanted the song to be in everybody's brain. And she was extremely effective in making it easy enough that it could stay in people's brain. There was genuinely a sick beat that would just play in your head over and over again. And like, (laughs) even if even if you're (laughs) like me and like did feel like it was overplayed at some point, I liked it when it first came out. I just I think I heard it on the radio so much at that point that I was just like so over the words but you can't help to this day like I went to the Eras tour this song was on the Eras the tour best. yeah it comes on like how can you not get up and dance to it you just cannot resist because, because it's got this I never beat. miss a beat I'm lightning on my feet yeah it's and it's lighthearted and it's fun and like how can you resist feeling good if a song makes you feel good because I think that's what the song's about right it's about finding the things that you need to do to cope and get through and just but- being yourself I also think the fact that she didn't she made it seem like she wasn't taking some of these criticisms too seriously was a really effective way and I think sometimes the way that people react to adversity is the thing that really like defines you right it's like you can go down and get like super offended like I'm gonna use Prince Harry as a great Mm. example of somebody who just like gets really annoyed at the negative criticism that he gets as if he is some sort of crazy victim like getting this criticism a lot of people get unfair criticism you can cry about it and write a book called the spare in which you dramatically talk about how miserable your really privileged life is or you can write a really really fun boppy song (laughs) yeah yeah i'm really learning a lot about your feelings towards the royal family we're all marketers. I like, I don't yeah. work in PR, but sometimes it makes me think of like the PR strategies of like, how do you like handle the, let's yeah. talking about like Joe Jonas and like Christ like, went down with Sophie Turner yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's like, you can like do this angry man act where you're like, Oh, my life is so unfair that like people are attacking me and it's so unfair. Or you can like, she, you can she did turn your whole career and be like, here you go. I'm going to take your yeah, like, and she, write me and then write, shake it off and write. She didn't space. whine about it. She was like, let me make this as light as possible. So that 
I can shake it off. And I think the music video, I would love to talk about the music video yeah. too. It's just like so fun and lighthearted. Like she's in a tutu for like a lot of the music And she video. knows that she's gotten a lot of criticism. She's like, she's admitted she's not a good dancer. And here is a, is a music video where she not only dances a bunch, but puts on a freaking tutu with point shoes to be the epitome yeah. of grace and then bounce around like a little bunny to be like, I don't care what you say with about like my dancing. With like actual professional dancers, right? Like there were professional <laughs> yeah. dancers in there, but she's just like, <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna just act ridiculous around all these really talented people. Two thoughts. One, I will try to find this account and I'll link it in the show notes. There is a gal on Instagram who she just does videos where she pretends like she's the PR specialist for someone who's done something dumb. And her videos are like, mm-hmm, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. They're really funny. I will try to link it. Um, I have seen her. They're so fun. But two, I think kind of going back to this song, I'm glad you brought up Mean because I wanted to kind of make that comparison. So this song, you know, kind of centering again, and we're seeing Taylor as the speaker and her audience is oh, really right. the world. Oh, rhetorical analysis. I forgot about that part. <laughs> Thank you. And her purpose is saying, I'm a pop star. I'm changing my genres. But she does it so specifically because there are other pop songs on this album that she could have done. And I think the introduction of I Stay Out Too Late, Got Nothing in My Brain is a hell of a reintroduction where she's not even starting with like, I'm great. Like you can think about, sorry to say his name here, Kanye West has a lot of songs that are very much like he's God, like they're he has a music video where he centers himself in a renaissance painting as the god figure like quite literally Deep cleansing and breath. this is you know this is a totally different starting out with saying like hey this is what everyone says about me but what i think is really interesting about this reintroduction is if you so if we go backwards to mean which i think is one of her first songs where she's kind of criticizing the critics she does have this sort of revenge narrative of i'll be living in a big old city saying like i'm going to be successful like kind of defending herself and what's so she interesting to me about shake it off is she just says that's what people say I'm going to keep cruising the players are going to do this I'm going to shake it off she doesn't address the criticism she's not like well no. I actually go to bed at a reasonable time or I'm actually quite smart she's saying you're saying all this stuff and her only response is shake it off because and I think best... that that's a clear new message of yeah. I don't care actually I'm doing this anyways well the best way to address criticism sometimes is not to engage it's just to go yeah. on being who you are and I think that's what we see you know you've got the first two verses are the negative things and then it goes into the pre-chorus which is like you know what I've got music I'm gonna keep moving you've got the chorus where she is like kind of shaking we realize that shaking it off is her coping mechanism for dealing with all this that she's not going to react and respond she's just gonna shake and then the next two verses are there's this turning point where she goes into like the as if the chorus and the shaking off was the coping mechanism and now she can say who she really is so the first two verses are what people think about her the next two verses are who she really is i never miss a beat i'm lightning on my feet and that's what they don't see right like who I really am, you actually can't see who I am. When I'm dancing on my own and I make up the moves as I go, you don't know me. So not only is she saying like, I got this, she says, I got this on my own. Like, I don't, you don't know me and that's okay. I want to talk about the other characters in this song also because there's there is an I as often is in Taylor Swift music there's also a you and mm -hmm. we talked about how this was a song where she was like this whole transition actually was like listening to her fans and her direct line of communication with her fans and this is one of those songs where I feel like the you is she is talking to her fans she knew that she is a role model for many where's the you sorry I'm... hey 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 hey, hey, hey. oh Just in the bridge <laughs> in the bridge oh wait wait it's to the bridge just think we're both well, really you've been ready getting for that. down and out, it's on the second page the liars Sorry. and the dirty cheats of the world you could have been getting down to this sick beat and i just i think that really owning her role as a role model as somebody who is talking directly to her fans like this song was not just a message about her shaking off her haters it was an anthem for anyone who listens to her music about how we can deal with our problems like why would you get upset about about the things people are saying or get mad at my ex-man's brought his new girlfriend. Oh my God, I'm just going to shake. But it's like, why would you get mad about these things when you could just dance it off and shake it off? That's like, to me, like an entire new generation grew up I with this it. in their arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. It's And again, if we go back to what's her purpose with the song, she is establishing herself as pop. We've said that a thousand times. She is establishing herself as someone who simply does not care what the critics have to say anymore. But I think she is really doubling down on yes the pop is a response to the fans as far as i can remember and i could be wrong this might be one of the first songs where 
It's not just an anthem, it's an invitation. She's inviting us into this mindset, into this space of dance, shake it off. And I think that that's, the invitation isn't to the producers, to the executives, to the it's power to people, it's to her fans. And I think that that's really interesting. Again, out of all the songs she could have chosen, this song accomplishes the all, almost everything from 19 could have done pop, but this song accomplishes the- what. I don't care what you're going to say, but fans, you want to come with me on this journey. Because guess and what? You bring, are what make me successful. And she literally brings them into our home. 99 is when she started doing the secret sessions, which is where she went through social media and found her major fans and invited them into her home or her many homes and let them get a sneak peek at her album before anybody heard it. Like she yeah. literally is, is bringing her fans into her home as part of this journey. With her. We, we have to transport ourselves back to 20 almost a decade ago a decade ago by the time this episode comes out and it was a different time pre-social media and post for sure but if you even think back we talked about i mean i'm not going to pretend like she deserves all of the credit for this because this is a movement that's been happening across pop culture in general but she was a big part of it and that is more direct direct connections with fans celebrities right. connecting directly with the people who support them more women supporting women she had her group of girl gang and like they got so squad. much hate for it her squad. the squad was torn apart well hold on let's pause on the women supporting women because this is the same album that has bad blood right yeah but i don't think which was not about supporting other women i think it was that uh, allegedly a woman i always interpret that as someone didn't support her yeah that's okay. what i thought too I okay. got a, it's like i still got a wound in my back from your knife all or right. something like we'll that, do that yeah. we'll do that on another episode all right sorry I will be, that song's I'm, I'm coming up like, for me soon <laughs> i'm trying to point out like a few trends yes. of like the last decade though like if we just think about like how culture has evolved yes. in general like I'm not saying that this is all Taylor totally, by herself totally. I'm just saying like let's go back to like a decade ago and how different things were there was like backstabbing and like only one woman can succeed in the industry fast forward to today where women are uplifting women across the board I um, loved how she and Beyonce went to each other's yeah. concert yeah. premieres like that yeah. was so that was also just a middle finger to the media of like Absolutely. you want to you want to build this pick... narrative screw that and she talks because about the that... media tried the media and tried she... to say like oh you have a black woman and a white white woman and like yeah. everyone's and focused on the white that, woman that i think in the time person of the year article or she's like yeah we had a summer of two incredible tours and they kept comparing them as like what like don't try to compare the two and, and as yeah. if we're pitting one against the other like we're both doing amazing things support that and she so yeah i i agree with you monty like we do have to go back to the time period when this song came out because there yeah. was so much happening culturally that is very different from, and from I, what and we I think today. I, I cannot and believe I think it's been 10 she, years. That hurts. Yeah, and I think she also understood that her fans, I mean, social media was, I think, the biggest shift. But I think the fact that everybody was getting more criticism maybe than people had even in the past, right? Like you've got comments, you've got people like getting envious on social media and stuff. I think to have this kind of an anthem come out at that time where you're like- Very powerful. It was very powerful and a kind of sign of the times. It's like times are changing. We're not going to let the same things that brought people down before let us bring us down in the future. Like we're going to try to move past that. Um, and I think in that sense, this song was like, pop songs do that. They capture the times. Like pop songs are specifically emblematic of, emblematic of the current events. And, and in many ways, this totally nails that. Yeah, I remember this came out when I was in grad school and I have a distinct memory of one morning I woke up at like 4 a.m. and just like stress. I don't know what I was, I don't know what the assignment was. And I remember just putting on this album and working on whatever my assignment was and be like, it's gonna be okay. So, I had some mean professors. I had some wonderful ones. But I think that was a semester I had one who just did not like me. And I had to like, it was, it was an anthem. It was a like, okay, like just do my best. Like this person's mm. opinion of me does not have to shape my career. But when you're 22 and in grad school with very smart professors, it's kind of an overwhelming experience. And this, this anthem was there and it did what she was trying to do, I think. So 19 came out when I was also in grad school. It was my first year of business school, Michigan, go blue. Um, this song became my entire identity. <laughs> for all of business school. So my friends who I met in business school, I will get texts when like, oh, this song came out on a wedding and I thought of you. Um, but that's also because I was in the band in business school, Risky Business, the rock band at 
Michigan. Is business uh-huh. school real? I have um, a question. Is, is it's it really the most school? fun. It's the most fun you'll ever have. But also, yes, I did have class and go to school. And <laughs> it, was, it was stressful. But there was also a band. Because the social stuff is also like, you know, it's about networking and building yeah. a career. And like, I found my job through someone near above me at business school. So anyway, I used to sing Shake It Off as my song in the band. And it brought other people joy as well. But it brought me the most joy to just get up on stage and sing this. Not very well, mind you. I did have to bring it down a half a key an octave. I don't know. I'm not really, I'm not very musical. I just play one on TV and I love it. But like, I just, this entire album, but particularly this song reminds me of that feeling of going to business school. This was the first time I left New York other than like studying abroad. Cause it was the first time I lived more than 30 minutes from where I grew up. And I also like at business school was where I just got to come into my own Business school is where I got to come into my own again and reconnect with the things that I loved, like performing. And I just was transforming my career, but also building these friendships that some of my closest friends today are the people that I met at business school. So it's just a place where I felt really myself and at home for the first time in a really long time. And so I think this song just kind of resonated with me both in that moment and where I was in life that I'm just going to shake off all the things that I have been feeling. And now I'm just going to be who I am and who I want to be. And this song to this day is my pump up song. Like if I have to give a presentation or an interview or whatnot, like I put this song on, I dance around and I just like, and it centers me and it it just gives me the right energy, but also the right headspace that I can do whatever it is that I need to do. I think that's kind of like the key is we've talked about her music being really relatable over our various episodes. And I think for the time that she released this, she wanted that. She wanted to release an anthem. She wanted to release something that would be universally relatable. She wanted to release something that would become something that you could be in your toolkit forever with her. And I think that the bridge like really like it's, she is talking to the fans in this song. I She's speaking directly to them. She's speaking to a whole new generation of like, you're dealing with some shit and you're going to mm-hmm. have to just shake it off. I shake it off. You can also shake it off. We can all shake it off. We can all shake it off together. And here's a beat to help you. And six feet. And go like that's your assignment. And you think about like, what would it have been like to like not have this in your toolkit forever? There's always music that comes around. But every now and then you have something that just like ties a bunch of people together. I and mean, I think this was that. And, and so when we talk about purpose of the song and like what yes. she was setting out to do, I would have loved to be a fly on the wall in that room having this conversation. Of, and I think she I know she's done like a ton of interviews about this song in particular. I know she talks about the dancing and the being silly and the shake it up, but I would have loved to understand like why this song, what her mission was like, it would have been an interesting conversation to just be able to listen in on because I think she does so many things really effectively as that like first big pop song that you're releasing. Yeah. And I'm looking at the other songs on this album and I was like, what was there another option for what that first song could have been it could have maybe been welcome to new york which is just like a yeah. thematically a great first song for the album yeah but not doesn't do the same thing as the first single mm. uh, blank space was the second single which was also very powerful amazing but much very much a different purpose yeah. different and purpose again, a very different purpose and then you have style and out of the woods which are both very upbeat but also different purposes and different feelings. And would have steered the conversation in different. a very different yes. way. Correct. And and yeah. the fact that this song is not about romance, right? Let's take a pause and think of when we thought when we think about yeah. the purpose of the song or what it's actually about. She mentions I go on too many dates as a criticism that she gets. And then you have the, in the bridge, my ex man brought his new girlfriend. But it's not about romance. It's just about the bullshit in general that people that is in the world and that people say about you. I also in this song really started to get glimpses of what becomes reputation. So in the, like, I mean, the whole song is actually about like, what are people's perceptions of her versus who she actually is. And we know that in reputation, she's playing on this idea of like, there's who you, what my reputation is, what you think you know about me versus who I really am. And so the first two verses in this song are what people think about her and what they say about her. And then the two verses after the cor- the first chorus is what you don't see and what you don't know, but who she well, actually is. <laughs> That's actually such a good point because actually when I think about it in context of what became reputation after this, I feel like really sad for her for a hot second because this woman started off on such a high note with this album, best album of her career, like hands down to this day, people agree, I think in many ways. And like, she was so determined to keep shaking it off, uh, but somewhere through the release of this album, the new level of 
fame that she got to, all the new scrutiny. I mean, it got so bad that she got to a point where she couldn't even engage, no explanation necessary. She just like leaned into her dark side and like, I gotta go. The fact that she just got pushed into this little like retreat, like she had to almost retreat. She did. After this, it makes me a little sad, sad, but. It is sad. And I think it's also. Success story looking back. It is, but I also (laughs) think, you know, there are things in life that you have, we talked about, you know, oh, stop complaining. There are things in life that you just kind of have to brush off and move and keep moving. And then there's also things in life where you have to protect yourself. Well, like if, if this if this album was all about just shaking it off and not letting it get to you, reputation I feel like is summarized by, well, my reputation's never been worse, so you must like me. Must for like me, me for like me. That, yeah, that's like where she got to. <laughs> like she went yeah. from up here to like I'm just top of the world to like bottom, hit rock bottom, and she's like, I mean, the bar is low. If you like me, then we must Thank- have something because yeah. frankly, nobody does right now um but even the fact that she was able to own that and just say that rather than fighting back i guess is speaks volumes yeah and again we talk about how she's still her you know even as she changes genres and i think even that line like you must like me for me it is in the context of a romantic song but just like we said with this song i think it's also for the fans of the Mm. fans who stick with and she and she keeps kind of she gives these invitations she extends her hand so often to her fans of saying like i'm doing this for you you know like if you if you want to join us i want to have you here um and i think kind of what you were saying too this song it feels like yes it's a therapy song and that like dancing can be like a way to process but it also feels like reminds me of therapy in that like she's not trying to change the haters she's not trying to change the players she's shaking it off and that's like such i mean i talk about it in therapy and everyone else i know in therapy kind of talks about it of like what's in your realm of control and how can you center yeah. yourself in that what can you control and then how do you manage that and that's like that's what this song is is like you guys do what you're gonna do i can control whether or not i respond and i'm not going to um and I think that that's kind of a, again, a, feels it feels just slightly different than mean. It feels like a little bit of a growing up of, mm-hmm. you know, and even with the reputation, I was thinking about it of like, there was too much going on and she couldn't control the narrative, but she could turn she it off. Away. She could not she could turn it off. Yeah. And so that's what she did. And again, that was when her realm of control, like that was her version maybe of shaking it off in that time. Shaking it off isn't always going out to a party. Sometimes shaking it off is saying like, I'm fully removing myself from the situation and just not engaging anymore. And like, that's okay too. You're reminding me that when you talked about dancing as therapy, that I actually, maybe I relate to the song because I wrote my college essay on dance as like a form of escape and how I use dance to like center myself and like process my emotions in high school. I love that. I love that. I love the right. song. I know. Do we do we feel like we should still go around and say what we think the purpose is? Since we do either of you, are you just ready to go? You're just so excited to go and share what you think the purpose of this is. I can go first. I think the purpose is very complex, which we kind of got through in this entire discussion. I think at its simplest, she wanted to throw out a really catchy song that was like very obviously pop. So following the pop structure, the pop instruments the pop rules the repetition i think like at its very surface level and at its core she was like i want to throw out an undeniably pop song because i am making a switch and i just want to go ahead and put my flag in the ground i think at a deeper level she wanted to address a lot of the things that were being said about her at that time in a very tactful and tasteful way i think in a fun way and i think she also wanted to talk directly to her fans and being like i hear you here's the thing we all are going through like I like you go through this nonsense here's a tool for us to deal with it we can have some fun and I think she just did all of those things flawlessly yeah I don't disagree sorry John I know you like it when we disagree but to me there is the purpose of the song itself and the purpose of the song in her canon Uh, the purpose of the song itself is thank you Kevin G from Mean Girls don't let the haters stop you from doing your thing just like you got to keep being you and figure out a way to to just harness who you are as a person and not let all the bullshit that other people think about you or say about you get to you. So that's the purpose of the song. The purpose of, that's the purpose of the song itself. The purpose of the song in her musical catalog is to, you know, emerge as a butterfly out of the cocoon into the world of pop 
and say, here I am. This is who I really am. And, and introduce herself as, you know, not a completely new person, right? But just an evolution of who she is as an artist. And I think it does that beautifully with all of the trimmings that you need for a classic pop song, but also lyrically in a way that actually says, I'm not, I don't care about what you think I am. I care about who I actually am. I think, um, I mean, this is something that I feel like we can even talk more about if we want to, but not only are we all marketers, but we are product marketers, which means we are in charge of these things called launches. The product. Uh, God, <laughs> help me. And, you know, in the world of tech, so it's, to me, this is a launching of a rebrand in a lot of ways. And like, that's something you're seeing in the world of tech right now. Like a lot of companies are kind of launching this, oh, we're our company AI and AI first. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's happening all over. But even if you're not in the world of tech, think about like when you, you know, a restaurant has a sign that's like, like under new ownership where it's saying like hey we're relaunching something's different you should come check us out if you were like a loyal Coke. yeah like if you were a loyal customer before come back in if you hated us maybe try us out because something's different and I think this was the launch but I think to me the more I really think about the song I think it was really for her fans because yes like sure let's get some new fans that's always great to grow but I think this song like you said like putting the flag in the ground but it's saying it's coming Coming out to her fans and saying, I'm going pop. I'm going to not care about the critics anymore. Do you want to join me on this journey? Like we've gone come this far together. Do you want to keep going with me? I would love to have you. But it's also a clear message of this is who I am now. This is what I'm doing now. There are so many ways I think that 1989 could have gone poorly. I think other, you know, if she had started with Out of the Woods or even This Love, great songs but it would have been confusing Very different. like a, a good launch is like you see it and you know exactly what's happening you know what it means you know the impact you know like you understand what's going on and this was a clean launch she chose the song that was going to be undeniable of who she is what she's doing creatively where she's going what this album's going to be and there's a call to action of come get down with the sick beat with me it is like the perfect launch honestly like it has and it ends in the call to action. It starts with saying, this is like what people say, but this is what I'm going to be doing. Do you want to come do it with me? It was like flawless. And because of the new format, the poppy nature of it, the timing of the song, the simplicity of it, she reached a much larger audience with this yes. song than she had previously. Mm -hmm. So Correct. you're yeah. talking about a ton of people who heard what is Taylor Swift for the first new time. New customer acquisition, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> Massive net thrown out. Nailed it. Like I think about the only other thought I can think about is like there was a moment where men started realizing that they actually like Justin Bieber with some of his music <laughs> like it's a similar kind of thing where like somebody was a child like everybody was like oh teenage girls like Taylor Swift that's it here you come out with this big song that was like literally on every radio for months and you're like oh, everybody I like was singing Taylor it. Swift everyone was singing it everyone knows yeah. all the words there's not that many words it's easy to sing along like nailed it yeah it's you know with a, a big launch you want to make a splash and like she made a splash but it's, she splashed I had a friend who worked at a startup and they kept changing what they were doing like every few months to the point that she worked there and she was like I don't know what we're doing and like that's the worst place you can be as any sort of a brand is when someone's like okay and you do what and like you give a five paragraph long explanation full of buzzwords and you're like uh-huh like I like your company analogy a lot because I do think that Taylor as a brand also has gone through obviously so many eras and evolutions but it's like has been always like working towards the like this this launch was her if it's fifth album there were all these albums before where maybe there were people who were confused and they're like wait with red i mean the overwhelming yeah. question people were asking was like is she a country singer is right. she pop like there was her, confusion her singles didn't sound like country right and just like most startups do go through that phase in the beginning for a few years and then you get to this point where you're like okay we are hitting a stride we have clear customers we're getting feedback we're getting some good this is around the time they hire product marketers where <laughs> There's like, okay, we need, we're hearing the customers. We're going to start like taking what they're saying and actually like putting that in our messaging and using that directly. And, and you have this identity building phase of, of when like a brand discovers themselves. Like Apple wasn't always the Apple we know it is today. Every, every company goes through they this kind of evolution. Yeah.
Well, I'm yeah. a big supporter of this evolution that she made. Yeah, talk about a mastermind. Like she's we've done earlier album songs and they're good and they're interesting and they have such a great place. I think nineteen eighty is when the mastermind kicked in. Like For sure. none of this was accidental. She knew exactly what she was doing. And, and it she was continued to evolve. Successful. Right. Like you look yeah. at then how she continued to evolve her sound on something like folklore and evermore and how she didn't need to make this kind of a statement of, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, well, I don't care what you say. She just did it. Because she knew that she could. Yeah. yeah. Even Look the you even, the, do. even the Taylor's version rebranding of 19 and was so different from the original, but in many yes. ways not. Like in many ways felt like a flawless extension. So I think, yeah, like it's the fact beautiful. that you can. It's a work of art. <laughs> the fact that you can have like this album that was like all city vibes, New York, bright lights, flashy lights, and then suddenly and then go into beach. like the ocean beach seagulls. I mean, and it still works somehow. Like, I don't know. Genius. Yeah, there's no sequins on here. Maybe I should have worn my Taylor's version outfit. It would have been like <laughs> jeans and a t-shirt. All right. Well, well that was thanks. one of our more nuanced deep I dives. I like our Very nuanced deep dives. <laughs> I love it. I love this song. I hope that for those of you who maybe previously were like, I don't care about this song. I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm trying to give you a You are trying so to give trying to change our mind. Stop trying no, to change I don't. my mind. I'm not trying to change your mind. I just want to add a different layer and a different perspective. <laughs> I mean, and Monty, you I will, still hate you the song. It. You're definitely, hate I is a hate very, song. hate is a strong word. I know, but I think that's the beauty of it is like when you do a literary analysis, like you can separate, like I will never like this song. I never, like even at the concert, I didn't like it. I'm sorry. Like it is what it is, but I definitely understand the nuances. Like yeah. I understand why it was yeah. important. I understand why it was amazing. Amazing. Like I hate Lady like is, it. I guess so you know we're even. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like too, I don't, this might be a dramatic way to close, but it's something I've seen a lot with the men in my lives where they think their opinion is what determines if something's good or bad. And just, and it's, but I mean, like, I fortunately have wonderful men in my life where it just takes one simple question of like, well, does you disliking it mean it's objectively bad or does it just mean right. you don't like it? And like, the light bulb goes on for them. Yeah, exactly. like, you don't have to like it. Yeah, and just because well, it's, okay. yeah, it's like just because it's I okay. like something doesn't mean everyone has to right. like it. Yeah, exactly. I don't like or this that it's one. Good. I, I like terrible will. things all the time. It's <laughs> fine. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think this is terrible. I love Shake It Off. We and know, you, Jody. And if you do too. <laughs> we get it. Welcome. Join you the like club. This song. Lo- we like, understand. I love. I love we, it. I love this song. This song is my entire personality. Uh, and if it's your personality did everyone too, catch that? I just want to make sure everyone got that. Come find me. Did I'm starting understand? a club for everybody who finds that Shake It she Off is their personality. really trying to prevent you from saying whatever you're saying. I'm trying to make Fetch happen. I'm Did making everyone Fetch hear happen. the fact that Jody loves this song? I just want to make sure nobody missed that. I can't today. wait to do this with your favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, thanks for joining us today on AP Taylor Swift.